And we're live. We are live. What's up, everybody? So we're sitting in a little different place this week. Um, we're in my dining room, since my office is all the way over there. Uh, the reason we moved is because the internet is a little slower this week. And I have this really internet cool... is a little slower this week. And, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. There we go. And uh, I have this internet booster, cell phone booster, right here. And so I'm sitting closer to it, so hopefully we don't have any glitchiness throughout the entire thing. We've got a bunch of stuff to talk about. I literally wrote a napkin Sharpie list, which I never do, and I always forget stuff. So I figured we would do that. Um, Leslie is here. She's over there. So she'll probably be helping me remember stuff and saying hello to you in the comments. Uh, so that's what's going on there. Holy smokes, everybody's here. Check this out. I didn't even see this whole thread happening already. Uh, I'll tell you what. We got a bunch of stuff to get to. So let's get straight to... Um, we didn't have too many comments come in on Patreon this week, but we did have one that... Uh, Frank asks, and I think it's a good one, and it's a compound question, a bunch of stuff here, it's like that long. So let's go ahead and get through it. Uh, for someone who doesn't have a wide and sophisticated tonal palette yet, and if they wanted to upgrade pickups, would it make more sense to go for a lower end set and work my way up and up? Or perhaps skip the lower end sets altogether and start with some decent but not totally wallet emp emptying pickups wallet emptying pickups um okay so we're going to start with that part of his question um first of all i disagree that very many people have not a very wide tonal palette you're selling yourself short you know what you like you know the sound you like you know what you want to sound like right you have this vision you're playing and you want to sound a certain way probably uh so don't sell yourself short like i don't think in certain circumstances i suppose like in you're working in a studio and listening to stuff i guess there could be beginner ears right but like you like what you like so don't sell that you know don't sell yourself short on that that number one number two um i always tell everybody Get the nicest stuff that you can afford to get right now. Um, and if there's something you think you really want, in that case, I would say don't buy the cheap stuff and just keep saving for something that you really want so that it's, it's the way you want it when, you know. Um, because if you go and buy guitar fetish pickups or you go and buy eBay pickups or you go and buy, you will not be very happy. And I know that people will get in the comments and be like, oh, I buy guitar fetish pickups all the time, and I think they're great. You may think they're great, and that's fine. Um, everybody's different. However, there's way, way better stuff out there. And this whole uh, they're good for the money thing is, I think that's baloney. Like, get what you want and if you have a vision of how you want to sound or what you think you're trying to do, stick with that. And don't sell yourself short on A, your ability, your level of your ear skills, or C, uh, what would be possible for you if you were to just save up a little bit. So, you know, get what you can get, obviously. But, yeah, don't, don't think you're a beginner and you don't deserve something cool. Like, that annoys me. Don't do that. Like, I, I will... I, I would hate for you to do that for yourself and then miss out on something cool. You know what I mean? So, no, you're good enough to appreciate good pickups. You'll put them in and you'll go, oh, wow, these are amazing. Like, you will. That's We all do it, and even if we're beginners. Um, let's see. I think my dad got me a soldering iron for my birthday, and I'm eager to start getting dirty. I did a bit of soldering in the Marines, thankfully, so it's to not totally new. Do I need a multimeter too? Thanks for your time. Your con content is hot fire. That's pretty awesome. Um, yes, you definitely need a multimeter. Um, I think every guitar player should have a multimeter and learn how to use basic stuff. We have a video 
about how to make basic measurements with the multimeter. And I will get to that since that question came up. We're going to talk about that in a minute. In fact, I'm actually going to write it on my list so I don't forget. Because I want to bring that up in a minute. Um, you don't have to get an expensive one. You know, I have a fluke. I think it's like 150 bucks. Um, you don't have to get that. You can get a pretty basic, decent multimeter um, for, you know, 35 bucks on Amazon. Um, I'll put a link in the description of this video um, for a multimeter that I think is awesome. And we have a couple of that I actually bought and used for quite a while. And we have a couple of um, videos about that. The only reason I stepped up to the fluke is because I was doing other measurements that a basic multimeter didn't do. I just actually needed some features. Um, and so that's why I stepped up to the fluke. And because I've been doing this a long time and it's just a really reliable piece of equipment. So that's the only reason I bought a fluke. Um, so yeah, really good question. Super good question. Definitely get what you can though, you know? just to keep moving forward in your hobby. You know, that's, uh, that's the thing. Um, all right, let's talk about this string test. So I don't know why my right foot is falling asleep. I don't ever sit here in this spot and something's causing my right foot to fall asleep. Okay, uh, so let's talk about this string test. So this string test is, was really fun. Um, a lot of people in the comments and the YouTubes I will tell you, I'm reading less comments these days. I don't, just don't have time. There's so many of them. But I do kind of try to take a scroll through um, every couple days and just kind of give it, give it a look-see. I will say that a lot of people, it was, most people were like, oh, this is really cool. Like, we, these are the strings I use. It was really nice to, you know, see a variety of things. Um there was a bunch of people that were critical of the test and how we did it, but I don't know. I mean, is there, there's really no better way or worse way to do that. You just try strings and if you like them, you like them. And if you don't, you don't. Um, some people, there was a few people that were really critical of me for saying that the first week I really liked the first set and they were my favorite strings that I've ever used. And then the third week I said that the first set, which were the NYXLs, we're not as good. So this is where doing comparisons like this is important because if you use the same thing all the time or if you just use one of a thing, there's no way to compare it. You don't know if there's anything better and you don't know if you like something or dislike something about it. So having a set of strings that I thought was awesome and there were definitely things I really liked about those strings. The NYXL strings were uh, super slick and fast and they felt really good and I liked the tension, I liked how they felt. I just, they were awesome. I just didn't like how they sounded. And I didn't even realize I didn't like how they sounded until I took them off and put something else on and compared it and I was like, whoa, now that I'm hearing it side by side and record it, because not very many of us when we're doing these tests actually record like an A, B, C, D, E test, right? And so doing that like that and recording one right after the other, I was like, whoa that is a way bigger difference than i ever realized you know you might you might hear it a certain way but then hearing it you know one right after the other i was like oh man yeah actually i don't really like how that sounds now that i'm hearing these other ones so i did change my mind for sure um i was definitely surprised by the results i was surprised that i liked the ghs as, as much as i did and I'm definitely surprised that the Paradigms, the Ernie Ball Paradigms, because those are pretty expensive, right? I've never bought them. Um, well, I bought that set, but I don't remember how much it was. I want to say they were like 12 bucks or 14 bucks or something. So they're pretty expensive, and they didn't sound expensive. You know what I mean? So it was, it was interesting. I hope that at least we tried to do it as level across as we could, so that um, even though it's a subjective thing and everybody likes something a little different, um, you could at least kind of get an idea like which direction each of those string sets was going. The other thing too you gotta remember is that different guitars act different too. Um, you know, you put the, those, those strings on a Strat and they might sound different. I don't know, you know, cause I don't have one built right now. So 
<clears throat> that's that's the thing too. That scale length, the 2475 scale length, stop bar tailpiece, etc. You know, Les Paul's gonna sound a certain way. Um, you know, yeah, that's that's the thing. Um, the next thing on our list. Oh, so let's talk about the tailpiece thing too. So the rising tailpiece versus screwed down tailpiece. This was a really fun video to make. It was a video that I wanted to make for a really long time. And it didn't get, it got a lot of views because I know people were, wanted to be triggered about it. But what's really interesting about it is if you think about it, even for like a couple extra minutes, when you have a bolt screwed into a threaded insert, it doesn't really matter how tight it is. There's tension pulling against it. It's going to be the same whether it's at the top or the bottom. You know, I mean, that's the thing. There's tension pulling against it for the strings. So it's literally a bolt that's being pulled like this. Whether it's this or this, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> really interesting um and somebody made a really valid point in the comments um that i wanted to bring up and i forgot about it and i would have put it in the video dan earlwine who we all know dan earlwine's like super duper repair guy right like he really knows his stuff he's old school he's pretty old-fashioned but he really does know his stuff um first of all the raising and lowering tailpiece is designed that way to be raised and lowered per the setup in the guitar. So if the action is higher, then it creates more of a break angle and you need to bring the tailpiece up to equalize that. It's more about the setup of the guitar and maybe we'll do another video talking about Les Paul setups so that we can specifically um, specifically put, put that in there. Um, second of all, one of the things he talks about and I'm sure you've seen it in the past, is where a Les Paul will actually have a bow in the bridge because it's being pulled down and the bridge will actually bend in the middle. Now, I know that was like some kind of faulty thing and I think people think they've fixed it or whatever. Um, but if you screw the tailpiece all the way down, it won't do that. So that's another thing. So just to keep that in mind as well. Um, what was the thing that we were going to talk about, we were going to call it whiskey and something. Do you remember? I don't remember. And if you guys can remember from the last time we had a live and we were joking about whiskey and tone or whiskey and tone sommeliers, something, I, there was something and you guys were going to come up with an idea um, for a name for it. And I was going to create like a column around it. So, or like a series or do something fun with it. Get in the comments or the, the feed and Leslie will pick that up. If you can remember, um, somebody said whiskey and whiskey. <laughs> yeah. If you can remember what that was, we were talking about last week. It just popped in my head before we started. And I was like, I think that was going to be fun, but I can't remember. So help me out with it. Um, yeah. So the other thing I want to talk about too is we're going to talk about giving away guitars and I also want to talk about this class. So um, Sunday night is the fourth Sunday of the month, which means that you can go over to patreon.com and you can sign up for this class. You can either sign up for the in-person one or you can sign up for the rerun that will release in 30 days. So this Sunday, the way this works, this Sunday we're doing a live class. But we're also releasing last month's class to watch and replay. Um, that's really cool. So there's two different Patreon levels for that. What I want to do with these classes is I want to turn them into more interactive workshops instead of people just coming in like, okay, what are we going to learn? 
I want it to be more of an interactive workshop. I really would like you to show up to the class with a guitar that might have a problem, that might have something you want to adjust or fix or you're not really sure about. Um, and we're going to actually handle problems and we're basically going to learn by doing. And I'm going to bring a guitar that I want to do some stuff with. And we're going to talk about it. One of the things we're going to talk about this week um, is in Saturday, in Sunday's class, uh, we're going to talk about some guitar setup stuff, some Les Paul guitar setup stuff. We're going to talk about um, shielding because I've got a shielding project here that we're going to talk about. So we're going to kind of dive into that. Um, and then the other thing is since it came up in the Patreon question, um, we're going to talk about how to use a multimeter to do some basic um, troubleshooting and we're going to use a real guitar and we're, I'm going to show you real numbers. We're going to put a camera on it and I'm going to show you real numbers. Like this is what you should look for. You don't want to see this. You do want to see this. And we're going to troubleshoot through some stuff uh, with a multimeter. So you learn how to use a multimeter. So that's one of the things we're going to do this week because it came up in that. I figured, well, Leslie says this all the time when she's training people is if one person has the question. There's probably a lot more people that have the question, but they just didn't, you know, didn't speak up and ask it. So I think it's a great idea. The dia, the digital multimeter thing is cool. So we're going to talk about how to's of multimeter stuff. On top of that, if you have a problem with a guitar or something that you want to work on, I want you to bring it, turn on your camera, turn on your audio, and you will literally be live with us. And, you know, there's usually been... I think we have like five or six people signed up for the class, but I think typically people about, about three people show up. So it's kind of fun um, because there's not tons of people yet and we get to really interact and it's, it's really real. It's really cool. And we've been able to solve some problems and draw out some wiring diagrams and do some stuff like that. It's going to be killer, man. Um, and I want to morph it from, Hey, come and listen to me talk for a half an hour because that, you know what I mean? I want to morph that into uh, more effectively a workshop. I want to turn it into a monthly workshop where we actually solve problems. And the cool part about that is, is if we have three or four or five or six or ten people show up um, with different problems, and as we work through those problems, you're going to learn in real time and real life how to solve problems, how to fix stuff um, as we look at each other's problems and, and solve them. So that's what I really would like to turn that into. Um, and that, so that's what we're going to do starting this week. So um, shielding, multimetering, and Les Paul setup are going to be the three basis things. And then we'll take whatever you bring and just build on that. And if it turns into an hour and a half of hanging out and doing this then that's what we'll do we'll um, if it's two hour it doesn't matter you know what i mean we'll all just pop a drink and start working through everything and we'll all be learning i think it's going to be killer um let's see what else is on my list oh giveaways so we have two guitars to give away um I don't usually start talking about this until we hit 45,000, like on the 5,000, but we're so close and we're at the, this point. I didn't want to mess with the Les Paul, the Epiphone Les Paul, until we were done with the string test because I wanted to not mess with even pickup heights or setup or anything because I wanted that test to be like super even all the way through. So now that that's all done, um, I want to start messing with that guitar and I think, um, and we're going to do some more videos with it. We're going to do, like I said, some setup stuff. Uh, I want to talk about pickup height. That seems to be a thing that comes up quite a bit. Um, so we're gonna talk about pickup height. I also want to talk about, uh, the pickups we're going to put in it. We got a new pickup design never before seen at Dylan Talks Tone ever. And they, they are going to go in that guitar. Um, and so whoever wins that guitar is going to get the very first set of those pickups. So I have to make them. We're going to make a video about it. Um, I've got everything kind of 
drawn up and figured up and I know what they're going to do and I'm pretty much generally know what they're going to sound like. Um, but of course, I haven't built them yet, so we don't know 100%. So that's going to be awesome. So you're going to be right along with me with... Um, you're going to be right along with me with the whole developing those pickups, which I've never actually... Uh, I've never actually done this part in public before, so I thought it'd be kind of fun to use that guitar, build these pickups, tell you what we're doing, how we're making them, and then see what they sound like in the end, because I actually don't technically know. Um, I do know on paper, but I don't know in real life, so this will be fun. So stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure that you do, because that, that's going to be really cool. Um, that guitar, that Les Paul, Epiphone Les Paul standard has, uh, Grover tuners on it already. So we don't need to replace the tuners. I don't know what else we want to do with that thing. Um, maybe we do an experiment with saddle types on that. We might be kind of fun. Um, of course we're going to change the wiring because we're going to go to probably some kind of. Well, we're going to change the pots out and stuff. These pickups are probably not going to be coil split. I mean, you could coil split anything, but these aren't. The center punches are the ones you want to coil split. They are made to coil split because there's no volume drop or very little volume drop when you coil split them. Um, they're the best pickups around for doing that. Of course, you can coil split any of our humbuckers because I make them all four wire. But I don't, but these ones you're not going to actually, these ones you're not going to be able to coil split. It will not. It won't work. So we won't have a bunch of push pulls and stuff. Maybe we'll do a series thing. That might be kind of cool. Do a series setup on these pickups. Um, I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. But the wiring on that guitar is going to get 100% upgraded. And then the pickups are going to be this new, this new pickup. And they're, I think they're still going to be called the Slant Six. I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what they're going to be called. Either that, or they're going to be called the Boxer. I'm not really sure. So, for those of you that haven't figured it out yet, most of our pickups, the the later ones. Not back in the day. So the center punch and the eight ball, those were named after how the pickups are built. Um, but the rest of our pickups, well, the DAF is named after me. But then the rest of our pickups after that are all named after engines. So that's that's where that comes from. Because I'm such a car, in, car nut. So that's where they come from. Um, so, yeah. Oh, and then, so we have a Jackson uh, Rhodes V. Well, it's not a Rhodes V, but it's one of their Vs that we're going to give away too. And that has the Zach Wild EMGs in it. Um, so we might do a couple more videos with that, do some setup stuff, make sure that guitar is really right, because I haven't actually played it since the first round of videos that we did with that thing. So um, we need to do some work on that guitar and make sure that thing's 100% right. Then... When we hit 50,000 subscribers, which I need y'all's help with, because I need y'all to share videos, all that kind of stuff, so we can get to 50,000 as quickly as possible, would be awesome. Then we'll give them both away at the same time. And then we'll do the same thing we did last time and give away some pickups to an international winner, since I can't ship a guitar overseas. So we'll do that same thing. Um... Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Let me see if there's any killer questions in here. Um, everyone, make sure you drop a like exactly, and there's 63 of you, including Thumbs Down Frank is here too. What's up, Thumbs Down Frank? I wonder if he, like, Anyway, uh, buy the good stuff first and you save in the long run. It's really, it really is true. 
it really it might take you a little bit longer to get there, but it really is true. Um, let's see. Thanks for the answer. I always forget that saving money is an option. <laughs> Dude, you and me both. <laughs> you and me both. Let's see. Um, I'm just making sure that I didn't miss any important questions in here. China Grove, North Carolina. That's an awesome song by the Doobie Brothers. I don't actually like the Doobie Brothers that much, but that song is really good. Um, let's see. Hey, Dylan, I just got a uh, Music Man Stingray bass with a roasted maple neck. I love the feel, but do you have thoughts on the pros and cons of roasting maple? Um, there's no con to roasting maple except... They're, it's all pros, really. Stability, feel, um, the looks of it. If I mean, that's subjective. The looks are amazing, though. Um, the only downside, there's the only downside, is when you roast maple, It because it caramelizes, basically, all, all of the moisture in the wood and all the sap and everything in the wood, it dries it out a little. So just be careful when you, if you need to like replace tuners or anything like that, that you don't strip out holes when you um, screw screws in. That's the, probably the only bad thing about it. Probably the only bad thing about it is just make sure that you don't do that. Um, licks and liquor. <laughs> Somebody was looking through last week's chat. Um... Let's see. Have you ever tried the Borns Model 82 pot? The little blue square one. I have not. I don't get too much into those wacky pots. Um, because they're, I don't know, they're used for other stuff. Like in an amp, for example, you would use um, those those little pots you would also use like a little 10 turn pot like that kind of stuff um because you're trying to be more precise in a guitar it just kind of doesn't um it doesn't really matter nickel versus chrome is there any difference barring looks so the difference between nickel and chrome so here's an interesting okay you may not know this nickel and chrome are the same thing so hey babe is there a there's a pickup cover sitting on the floor right there it's like scratched up can you can you see if it's there it's over there by the bag like it's just like thrown on the floor it got damaged so I was just gonna use it for this kind of stuff okay Okay, so here's the interesting thing about pickup covers. Oh, no, this isn't the damaged one. This is a good one. Okay. So when they make chrome, um, chrome is actually clear. Chrome, that treatment chrome, is actually clear. It's a hardened, clear material. The reason it looks like a mirror is because nickel is underneath it, and then they put chrome on top of it. That's a really oversimplified way of explaining it, and there's more technicality to it than that. What really matters is if the pickup cover itself is nickel or brass or copper on the inside, that is what is going to change the tone of your pickup more than anything so nickel versus chrome doesn't matter but we use nickel pickup covers because they introduce less eddy currents into the pickup than copper or brass brass is the worst cheap pickup covers on people want to know for example what the difference between a cheap pickup and a good pickup is cheap pickups will use a brass a 
chromed brass pickup cover instead of a chromed or nickel plated nickel pickup cover. Copper is also in there um, because that's part of the plating process, basically. But brass being the substrate is the big difference. Um, this one's nickel. You can see on the inside, a lot of the brass ones, if you sand them right here, you can tell that it'll turn, if, you, if it's, it's brass, it'll turn gold. Like it'll look like a brass bell underneath the chrome. Um, if it's nickel and you sand it right here, it'll look like a kind of pinkish almost. It's just a different color. Nickel, bare nickel is a different color when it's raw. And so, um, because when we milk, when we make these, we put the pickup in here, I have to file the edge right here to give me a good soldering surface. And so, I mean, that's how I know what it is. Um, our open top covers that we use for like carbon fiber or like the slant sixes, the open top ones that don't have a, you know, there's just a ring around the outside. Those are brass, but it doesn't matter because there's no surface to cause eddy currents really. Um, but these, it matters. Yeah. So that's why we use good pickup covers. That's a, that's a big, that's a big one. That's a really good question actually. Um, let's see. Did you ever try the Sustainiac technology? Okay, so the Sustainiac stuff, this has come up a bunch of times in the last couple of weeks. Um, it's probably going to be my next purchase from... What's the place? From, from Patreon. Uh, we're going to use our Patreon money to buy a Sustainiac setup. Um... And we'll probably test it out in the Les Paul before we give it away. So it'll be soon. And we will talk about how it works and what it does. And then we will give it away because I don't need it or want it really. But it is an interesting technology for sure. Um, so yeah, man. What size wire do you use on vintage style single coil pickups? It depends on the pickup. Um, so a neck Telecaster pickup is 43 gauge. A uh, bridge Telecaster pickup is 42. Uh, Stratocasters are 42. Um, P90s are 42. Our DAFs, which is like uh, our, our PAF, uh, vintage PAF, those are 42. Um, yeah, so... 43 we use on some other stuff too, but 42 is a lot. Mostly a lot. Awesome. You guys, this has been super fun. Um, oh, you're planning on giving away the Sustainiac uh, itself out of a Sustainiac equipped guitar. No, I'm actually going to buy a Sustainiac system. Um, I'm going to try anyway to buy the pickups themselves as a pickup and then the Sustainiac bar thing and etc. all the stuff that goes with it. And we're going to use it, talk about it, talk about how it works, make a couple videos about it, and then we'll give it away for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Let's see. This will be the last one and then we'll let you go. Uh, I have an HSS Strat with Oak Grigsby five-way switch wired for splitting the coils of the humbucker. Is there any way to wire so that the middle tone pot also controls the tone of the bridge pickup without replacing the switch? So I do this a little different. Um, I actually do the bridge pickup on the bottom tone knob. And yes, you can do that without replacing the switch. It just takes a little jumper. We have a wiring diagram for that over on Patreon. I will be doing a video probably the end of next week. So you'll see it in the next couple of weeks. 
um, about this mod because I actually have to build a single single hum Telecaster with a five way switch and a coil split uh, for a customer. So I thought I would make that video and talk about that exact same mod that you're talking about. We're gonna break that down and do that. So yeah, man. Um, is there a preference on wire coating on pickups? Yeah, I use poly everything. Um, people will make all kinds of myths and groan and moan about plain enamel wire, but um, the long and the short of it is the thickness of the insulation on the wire is more important than what it's made of. And for everybody that groans and moans about plain enamel wire, it's not even made how it used to be made in the old days because it has chemicals in it that kill you with cancer. So I don't care about it anyway. Um, and you can get the same sound out of 42 gauge poly as long as the insulation is the same nominal thickness as plain enamel. And we have stuff that it is, so it's good. And it works awesome. And actually, our plain enamel is purple, so it looks like, I mean, our um, poly is purple, so it looks like the vintage stuff, too. So when you look underneath there, it looks proper. So, yeah. That's it, man. You guys are awesome. This has been super fun. Uh, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. If you're old here, thank you so much for being part of this thing. And uh, hit the like button so we can offset uh, thumbs down Frank. And um, you guys have been killer. This has been super fun. I'm sure we will see you on Monday. I've got a couple of cool videos in mind. I haven't shot them yet. Um, but we're gonna talk probably about some guitar setup stuff on Monday and maybe do some more myth busty testy stuff. So thanks for hanging and we'll see you soon. Oh, and don't forget, that class Sunday night, make sure you get over to patreon.com and subscribe. I mean, sign up for that because it's going to be awesome. We'll see y'all.